Uh, we open the conversation yeah. today about preparation. 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 A lot of you write or are worried about their fitness level for Camino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of some people never attempt Camino because they think they are not prepared or they don't cannot prepare enough. Yeah. Do you remember my parents? My parents would say, "No, no, I cannot walk. I'm, I'm too old. I don't feel I'm fit enough for Camino." Mm -hmm. And they did it. And they did it. And they did it. And if you just connect it <laughs> to us, as always, we come in and tell us we all about the holistic preparation for Camino de Santiago and any other long distance walking. For us, preparation is not just physical, which we're going to talk about today, but also mental, emotional and spiritual. Yeah. We have a beautiful journal that serves as a guide for many people from all over the world. And now we have in the retreats. But that's about us. What about you? First important thing, this might be a shock for everyone, but this is... Oh, a, maybe not. This is the bitter truth. <laughs> the hard truth. Bitter truth, guys. What is your physical level now? Yeah, what is your fitness level? How much do you walk? Uh, are you used to walk in different terrains? Are you used to carry a backpack when you walk? Do what? you walk once every three months or do you walk daily? <laughs> when you go to the gym, there is always like a thing that they ask you. The assessment, the physical fill assessment. Fill the questionnaire. Yeah. And the same pretty much happens on, on when you're preparing for Camino. Because depending on what is your day-to-day -day life and how much walking you have in your day-to-day -day life, that's how much you will have to prepare. The best idea would be like you have some you have a liking for walking. Yeah, I love when we met once in um, Uterga, I think mm. we were sitting at the table, dinner table uh, on Camino, and there was we were saying, "What do you like about Camino? What do you what you don't like?" We were doing a round of answers, and the Korean girl, I said. Ah, I don't like the walking. <laughs> the, the, the walking the main part. part I the, way, the walking part I don't like. Well, Doug says, I don't walk yet, but I work out twice a week with a trainer and I do boxing twice a week. Does walking on a treadmill help with your training? Boxing. Um, you would be knocked out after <laughs> one minute and a half. I will have a question. If you have a boxing competition, would you rather do walking before or boxing before? Huh? Why this question? Because it's it's okay that you're moving a lot because the body on the end is gonna be really cool. But then what actually happens is that, that slowly but surely you will have to go towards the same physical activity that you're gonna do for 35, mm -hmm. say it's 40 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So this is the first one. Have it clear before anything else. You, know, you remember last time we walked, we talked about uh, booking the accommodation, and the first question was the basic question: what type of traveler or what type of uh -huh. experience you want to have. Now the second one: which Camino you doing in 2024, 2025? 2024. Mm -hmm. The next one at least. <laughs> Put down in the comments as well, so we can we can kind of craft the yeah. the conversation. Which is your Camino that you're gonna do? First of all, Camino del Norte, it's tough. <laughs> tough. I cried. No. Ah, ah, Nelly. Um, first, especially first uh, for seven seven days on the northern part, the proper hiking. So it's tough and requires different shoes and requires different equipment. And if you go without the preparation, you suffer. Camino del Norte is 820 kilometers, 26 kilometers. It's a lots of walking and a lots of hard terrain. If you choose to walk the Primitivo from Camino del Norte, which is an option, it's even higher. So have in mind that it can be difficult. So we have Len. Camino Frances, he's starting from the retreat venue in September. Cha. Camino del French Camino, it's a bit easier because it has three... Mon uh, three peaks. Three yeah. peaks. So there is some physical effort involved, no? For me, for example, no, if you go on how we would train, no? Because we live in Canary Island, so we have landscape full of mountains and volcanoes. Mm -hmm. So it's ideal to train. So I would do it once 
So I said, we go for a hike on the mountain. So you would say, okay, I'm trained. But walking for many days in a row with a backpack, that's a different story. With that's a, a different story. There are easier caminos. Portuguese is easier. English way it's easier. Yeah, and the most, there are, yeah, yeah. And there are more difficult as well. Troy just finished Via de Plata. Via de Plata. Long stages. Long stages. Long, really long stages. So, so French Camino is just somewhere in the middle. That's a good point Wilma make. Before I started my Camino, I was walking at least four to five days a week and training in CrossFit gym for four months and still I did not expect the dangerous terrain I would encounter. Let's make this conversation about do you want only to make a Camino and it's over? Or do you want to make a permanent change, transformation in your health, in your mental, physical health? Because what we've noticed that once you implement the Camino to your everyday life, your health changes dramatically. Your mood. Your mood changes dramatically. Your sleep. <laughs> your sleep, everything changes dramatically. For example, when we are back home, when we are not walking, um, what we do before sleeping is going for a walk, yes. or every night. Every night we'll go a walk. So, so this is the question. So if you only prepare for Camino, there's one thing. But if you actually try to make a permanent a change. change in your habits, in your food habits, in your uh, uh, health habits, in your, in your thinking, that's a bit of a different preparation because maybe you would consider not just the event, but a rather life thing. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing. What are the biggest problems of preparing? Like the excuses, excuses. that we can give. Mm -hmm. It's raining. It's raining excuse. It's cold. It's cold excuse. I'm tired. Oh. I don't have the motivation. The motivation. You don't, you don't have the motivation. This is the motivation. It goes falls into the motivation yeah. funnel, no? Yeah, because if you're not motivated, all the other excuses are worth, no? Mm-hmm. But if you are motivated, you don't care. What are the other problems when preparing for Camino de Santiago? You don't know where to start. You don't know how to do it. Overdoing is another thing. It's like do, learning things on your own. Mm. Your body is your best teacher. You listen to the body, you're going to get that. But try to learn something like a guitar on your own. It's okay. You will learn. <laughs> It would, Maybe. It would take you ages. It would take you ages. But if you go to like a professional trainer, if you have a plan of how to prepare, how easy would it be? <laughs> Let me read the last comments, please. Dr. Quilombo, one of the lessons for my next Camino will be schedule a free day before starting just to wind down. Thank this you. is what we always say. This is. And it's also why we say the Camino retreat at the beginning to slow down and separate what you are living back home and what you are going to experience next. Mm -hmm. It's really important to have those two, three days off. This is where the journey within retreat comes into hand. One of the part of the journey within retreat, there are free support calls, group calls, where we actually discuss all the things. We craft the plan, especially for you, the <coughs> training plan of how to prepare week by week but not only that, if you take in consideration the excuses of the Camino... We're going to do like challenges of the kilometers we have to walk on the week. Mm -hmm. Just to train together, we are partnering crimes on if this. If you want. If, if you, you want, want. If you want. If you want. We are not forced on this. So we're holding those retreats in May and September. Um, there's a limited group, limited, and they, they're filling up really fast. So have in mind, go to the website, go to our website, CaminoTellers.com and check the dates for you. Uh, wait, I wanted to answer... Ah, Sarah, for me, the most important preparation was to leave my house in peace, sorted everything for my family, friends and work. That's a really good point. There was someone, I don't remember his name, you may remember, that said he left like problems at home. And when walking the Camino, he was still at home with his mind. He fell, he broke his arm. So it's really important to close everything that you have back home, that everything is at his place. Physical part is the main thing that you have to start with. And then you suddenly discover that mental strength 
is equally important. Even more important. Even more important. Even more important. And then you suddenly realize that some emotional support also goes well with that. Not even mentioning something deeper, which is simply understanding who you are. But we start with a physical uh, help. Yes, the physical uh, training. Yeah. I think mental strength is also something that you have to build up, the resilience, because that keeps you moving mm -hmm. on the days that you are, you don't have motivation, you are really tired. And if you're preparing on your own, I think the most important would be to take your time. Four months before. I would say five, six. Five. It, it depends on the on the con physical level that you are in. Mm -hmm. Some mm. people can start three months before, but if the earlier, the better. Mm -hmm. I think you suffer less. And as the old saying said, if you walk, if you start like a... And now you like to say it in every life. <laughs> go for it, go to yourself. No, you want to say it. If you start like an old young oldster and finish like a youngster, yeah, Ian, this is especially for you. If you start like a old old man, old woman, um, take it easy, and then you pick up the pace. It's really good, like going back to the conversation we had last week. If you don't book in advance, because maybe you you see that you need more time. If you have that extra time that you can give to the Camino. <laughs> so this is another thing that to have in consideration. Walking plus booking, reserving. Have it in mind. 